Well, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Project Time Tech. I know you guys have already watched the, uh, the, the video of pimping out my, uh, my network cabinet at my house and getting a 10 gig ethernet connection out to my studio building that's detached. And you've probably also seen the video on putting a network in my camper and getting that up and going. Well, now it's time to turn our attention toward this garage. This is, uh, this is the garage where I film content from my primary channel called Project Time Garage. Seems weird to have a network in your garage until you start peeling back the layers of what's actually happen happening down here and what I'm using this for. Before I go into all that, let me, uh, let me give you a quick uh, overview of exactly what we're gonna do today. If you see behind me back there, that big, we'll call it an antenna array. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff happening on that. I'll cover that here in a second uh, and, and why it's there. But, but the gist of it is I was using a, a, a nano beam to shoot uh, up to the house to get internet connectivity down here and it's worked for a long time until that died so we're going to replace that with uh with air fiber okay that's overkill why in the world are you shooting air fiber because you know it's it's just right there well that that answer is pretty simple i have air fiber that was left over from kind of some demo stuff and it's been sitting in the floor of my office now for call it five or six months still in the boxes I'm not gonna throw them away. So why not use them here, right? Um, basically, I have a choice of either using Overkill Air Fiber HD60 for free or going out and buying something. Free, buying something. Free, buying something. See where I'm going here. As it stands, that nano beam that's up there on that pole shoots back to, to uh, nano beam at the house well, that is a uh, point to multi-point nano beam up there. So that is the station side, and that station sh side was covering this garage and is still covering the entry gate down there. Why do you need stuff like that at your entry gate? Well, let's handle that. A couple of reasons. Number one, there's an automated gate down there. So that automated gate really needs to be on the internet, or really needs to be on the network if you're gonna open it and close it, you know, via phone apps and such like that. The other thing is there are a couple of, um, there are a couple of cameras down there uh, that are just basically looking at the driveway and catching tags as people roll up and roll down my driveway, just so I can see what's going on. Also, I've got one of those, uh, those ringy doorbells down there that, that dings my phone when people pull up to the gate so I can let them in. So. There's a need down there to have some stuff, and from what I from what I have dealt with so far, uh, just Wi-Fi wasn't quite cutting it. So, eh, you know, I had another nano beam left over, so I shot it down there, and it's worked. That's been down there for like three or four years, and it has literally not been down once. Watch, it'll go down today. Well, I'm gonna take it down today. Anyway, all that to say this, we're gonna replace the shot from here up there with the Air Fiber HD60. We're gonna stick the air fiber on the side of the camper pavilion up there. The reason why is, well, we already have uh, a 10 gig fiber run from that, that building that's right behind it to the house. That's where my studio is. So I've got 10 gigs there, and plus I've got a couple of dark fair, uh, pair of fiber. If I you know, really wanted to just take it straight on into the house, I could do that pretty easy. I don't wanna replace the, uh, the nano beam on the side of the house with the air fiber because I only have a single gigabit uh, cable pulled to that location. And I'd rather have a camera in that location anyway. So for the air fiber, I'm gonna pull two cables. I'm gonna pull uh, one for PoE. I'm gonna pull one for the SFP. Uh, I think we're gonna uh, try to stick in a, uh, a 10 gig SFP into it. I think it's got SFP plus ports, if I'm not mistaken. We're gonna stick that in there and maybe in the future we'll try to move up to you know something a little faster than gigabit uh, across this and just see what we can get out of it just kind of play around but anyway i don't want to limit myself doing that so that's why um let me show you what's on the inside and why all right welcome to my garage i'm sorry in advance if it's a mess but it's just where we're at so this is where we're focusing most of our attention for today once we get our connectivity back up. So uh, let me run through what I have in here first. Starting at the very top, there's a uh, PDU, followed by a few blanking 
uh, panels, unified 24 port PoE switch. That pretty much handles all the cameras and things that are connected to this particular building. And then down at the bottom, we have a couple of Netgear NASs and then finally a battery backup down at the very, very bottom. The NASs, what do they do? Well, the one on the left, that takes care of uh, doing backups from the primary NAS that resides at my house down to here, backing up things like documents, pictures, images, software, you know, that type of stuff, that keepsake stuff, stuff that you don't want to get rid of uh, or you don't want to lose is there. The unit on the right, however, well, that's my YouTube uh, raw video storage, cold storage, I guess you could say, or warm storage. Let's call it warm storage. It's lukewarm storage. See, I don't have a whole lot of videos on this channel, but on my primary channel, I think there's about 140 or something uh, videos out there. So uh, I've been at this a while. And having been at this a while, I've generated quite a bit in terms of raw video. And I like to refer to that raw video when making other videos occasionally. So it's really, really handy to have all that raw footage, unedited stuff right there, along with, you know, all the thumbnails that I've generated and all the, you know, the GIMP files that I've made for like thumbnails and all that stuff. That's all, all stored on the main NAS at the house, but it backs up down here. So house burns, tornado comes through, you know, uh, Godzilla comes through and crushes the house and eats my NAS. Well, at least I have this and maybe he'll leave this garage alone. I don't know, maybe. Basically, today we're going to do a couple of things. Our goal for these NAS units is to get rid of them. We're going to replace those two NAS units with uh, the Synology rack station, I think it's an RS-816, that we took out of our rack back in the first home network video. It's been sitting on the shelf idly, and my plan is to replace those two with that one thing and then uh, set up shared folder replication using rsync and um, basically just have the two mirror each other to the extent we can or to the extent we have space to do so. So that's the game plan for today. Ambitious? Yes. Doable? Hopefully. Let's, uh, let's get rolling here. Now, like I said, I've already uh, at least installed or hung the air fiber up here now. So that's in place and happy and ready to go. Once that is lit up and going, I'm probably going to take that big and other on the antenna down, which is really just serving as no other reason than mounts for stuff. I'll take that thing down. I'll take that cell phone booster that's up on the very top and I'll probably just mount it to the, to the top of that existing pole right there, uh, or, or the top of the air fiber pole. And we'll be done with that. I have the, uh, have the pole mounted up there where I want it. It's exactly 90 degrees, and we'll go up here and stick the, uh, stick the antenna up there. Wish me luck. All right, we have our, uh, we have our what's going to be our master uh, set up. So we'll go down to the garage and we'll get uh, the other one powered on and then hopefully we can find these things. Let's check it out. Okay, so we have both air fibers uh, now powered up and working. Um, now it's time to, to make them talk to one another and then we'll do some alignment on them. You see the uh, 88 dB one here on my screen. I'll show you that now. That's the one up top and that one is connected uh, over the network. So I'm going to I'm not going to use that one because that's not the one I want to do. Let's leave. I'm going to connect to this one. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and connect to this one here. This is the 86B one. And um, we're going to go ahead and make it the slave unit. And create slave unit. And we'll change this to Air fiber. We're going to go ahead and work on aiming this antenna a little bit better. And in order to do that, we're going to grab our cell phone. And right now we're going between good and great signal. So let me turn on my screen recorder. I'll go to antenna alignment. And um, basically I can just start rolling these uh, left and right until 
my signal improves or doesn't improve. So as I, as I turn, let's say up and down, I'm just gonna turn slowly and it's getting better. And I'm just gonna keep turning until it starts getting worse. Negative 47 is the best I've had, so I'm gonna start going back the other way. This is left and right. And very small adjustments make very big differences. Still 47 is the best I've had. So I'm gonna go back to where I was, a good solid 47. And now I'm gonna start working with my elevation. And it's actually getting a little bit better with my elevation. And I'm just gonna go until it starts to get worse again. And it looks like we're getting worse now. Yeah, we're getting way worse. All right, we'll start easing back up until we get back to our 46. Sometimes you have to turn a little bit and then wait a second for it to settle down. Forty-six, forty-seven, something like that. Now that I've reached that, I'm going to go sweep back and forth again and see if I can improve that any. I got thirty-nine right there. So which way was I going to get thirty-nine? All right, I'll see what's going on here. I think the antenna needs to be bumped over just a touch. Let's try that. I'm basically out of uh, I'm out of adjustment here. And let's ease back a little bit more. 38. Let's just keep fine tuning. Okay, that's getting worse again. So the more, the more I angle it this way, the better it gets. So I'm out of adjustment again at 39 dBm. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna give it a pop this way again, which is probably gonna be way too much, but hopefully I have enough adjustment to start to bring it back. Yep, getting better, getting better. Just gonna keep turning. 38, 37, I believe I'm going to leave well enough alone at negative 38 on this side. Now, we'll go back up to the other side. I've already adjusted it once. I'll go back up there and we'll adjust it again and see if we can get this down anymore. But this is pretty good. Well, so um, we didn't quite get it. Um, we didn't quite get it aimed because as we were in the middle of wanting to aim it, Mother Nature had other ideas. So... Since it's going to be rainy and gross out there right now, and we have a link that's worth about two gigabits, which is more than the link that we're plugged into anyway, so um, maybe we should handle this right here and do some beautification slash straight pimping. Well, I guess the idea first here is I want to put this NAS in there. This is the one that came from um, up at my house originally during that very first video where I replaced uh, the Synology with the 30 terabyte version And the one that had 10 gig Ethernet Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll put this Synology NAS right on top of that uh, of that CyberPower UPS and then I just happen to have a PDU to go up there and a bunch of these OCD panels. So uh, that will look pretty neat when we're all said and done. And also, since it worked so good the last time, I bought some more of these pimping lights here to you know, put in the front of the cabinet there and even pimp it further. So let's see how far we get and how well we can make this turn out. I guess I need to go ahead and 
take the switch down and everything while I'm at it here because actually I probably should just take almost everything down shouldn't I including the link we just established up here a second ago let's do that let's just pull everything basically out of this rack and we'll just start over for the most part I'm gonna go ahead and stick in some of these blanking panels, our OCD panels from Ubiquity. And um, since I'm running really short on rack nuts, I probably won't put rack nuts on every one, but it's a whole lot easier to do it right now than it is to do it later when the rack is completely full. Okay, I guess next we're going to put another blanking panel and then we'll put our PDU. I'm thinking PDU right about here somewhere. Yeah, that looks good. Well, that's about all that's actually gonna go in here. The rest of this is probably just gonna end up being blanking panels. So I think what I will do is just go ahead and start powering stuff up down here. All right, so there comes that. And at this point, I will, um, I'll probably just start maybe with the switch and we'll power it up first. I'll do number one as the switch. Hopefully that's what that is, right? So that's our switch coming up. The next thing we'll power up will be, I guess, the NAS. If I can find the cable for the NAS. I should have bought the, uh, I should have bought the, uh, the panel where the, the wires come out, like I've got up at the house. Can't remember what it's called now. Hopefully that is that, right? Yep, there comes the NAS. And I guess we need some power down here or some network connectivity down here. I'm gonna use that as a number 16 because that just seems like a number 16 kind of thing. And we'll just do it this way. That should start to get some internet back up down here. And yes, I'm just going to hide everything behind another blanking panel back there. All right, so that should have about everything here sort of back up. And I can clean this up some, make it look a little bit better. This is the, um, the cellular antenna, the cell booster antenna, which works pretty well, I gotta say. Okay, so that's plugged back up and clean. What's left here? I've got a uh, Phillips Hue that needs to go in. Let's go ahead and get a blanking panel up there. So that cleaned up uh, quite a bit. I still have a little bit of maybe some light cable management to do here. I'm not gonna do a whole lot because, well, you know, because, well, you know. 
That worked out pretty well. I've got a little bit of cable management I still need to do here. And I've mounted my Phillips Hue here just on the front of this blanking panel. And I mounted it with, um, let's just say some advanced mounting technologies. Let's leave it at that. And for the lights, I'm going to use other advanced mounting technologies to put those up there. So that it is a robust and convenient connection. I'm gonna put them like this, just like that, shining inside the cabinet. And to do that, zip ties. They're not just for breakfast anymore, kids. All right, we're gonna mount them something like this. No right or wrong here. They're just some zip ties, but they're gonna look good. I gotta say, I really like the way these lights look, the, the ambiance they give the rack. It's completely and totally, you know, useless, but man, it looks good. There. And to plug them in, luckily, um, I think we can just go right around here to something USB. Too bad our PDU doesn't have USB, but it doesn't. There we go. That's gonna be a pretty cool little look going on there, right? But I need to turn it so that you don't see the actual bulbs from the outside. That's pretty good right there. All right, let me do a little bit of beautification here, clean up and such, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the finished product. And then we need to set up this NAS to do some backups. Well, there is a finished look at how we ended up with the little project here. A whole lot cleaner for sure. Of course, we still haven't done anything with that NAS. We've got to worry about that next. Looking inside. Cleaned up pretty well. Cleaned up a lot better than what it was for sure. All right, so here we are inside our two NAS units. Now, the one on the right still says home storage, even though I've renamed it um, home backup, which is what it is. This is the NAS unit that's down in the garage. This is the NAS unit that is um, up here at the house that contains all of our data. And the way we're gonna do this is we're going to use um, shared folder sync in order to basically create jobs and run them on a schedule to send each one of our shared folders from the server up here at the house down to the corresponding spot um, down at the garage. And it'll run on a schedule and we won't really have to worry about it. We'll just have to check in on it from time to time. Here's the problem with this. Um, in order for this to work, let, let me kind of run you through this. If I, uh, if I create a new task and let's just call it, the first one is audiobooks. And we'll do next and we'll choose the, the source, which is at the house. This is the audiobooks uh, shared folder. There's this thing here that it makes you check first. It says, I understand that if the selected destination already contains a folder with the name of audiobooks, I'm going to rename it. So um, if they don't exist, they'll be created. What that means is if you go ahead and accept this and you run this, um, what you'll end up with is when you browse out here, in addition to the audiobooks, which is the original uh, directory that I had here, you'll have an audiobooks one directory. That's aggravating because basically this NAS already contains a pretty close image to this NAS already. Sure would be nice if I could, you know, just use the data that's already there, but I'm going to have to recreate it all. And in order to do that, we're going to have to um, delete these things. And 
not much else you can do to do it. Just delete them. Now there are a few things on here I don't really care about. Um, like this CCTV folder. This was uh, recordings, old recordings from, um, from my camera system. So I'll go through and I'm going to delete all of these. Actually, I'm gonna leave the social media folder here just for a minute because, um, oh, net backup. I need to delete net backup before I go much further here. So at this point, I have my social media directory, which is basically all of my um, all of my YouTube stuff, and um, there's a lot there inside the social media directory. For example, my uh, my YouTube for my primary uh, YouTube channel. There's a lot, a lot, a lot there. Um, so. I'm going to leave that there just for a second until I get completely done. And then once everything else has synchronized, I'll jump back to social media and take care of it. Uh, meanwhile, let's look at this thing and see what we have as far as storage. Shows I'm using about 82% of my capacity. Um, total capacity is 15.9 terabytes. And I'm using 13.1 terabytes of that. Um, I just tanked a whole lot of data off of this thing, so I would assume that this will eventually um, clean up and be better. But anyway, let's get back to what we were working on here. We'll jump back over to our primary NAS unit, and the way you access this is going to be from the control panel. You can go into um, file services. Under file services, you can go to advanced and you'll see the shared folder sync. And right now the server is currently paired with home backup, which is really this one here. I don't know why the tab still says home storage, but it does. But anyway, um, it's paired with this because this is the way I initially got all of my data from the home storage server over to my, this new NAS. Um, so let's, let's create a new task and we'll just do the very first one in it, audiobooks. Next, and we'll choose audiobooks. And I understand that yes, if it's not there, it'll it's going to rename it if it's there. And for server or IP, you can pull this down, and it'll search and find uh, find its mate out there. You just have to wait for it. Home backup. It found it. So. I use it to do a test connection real quick to make sure that I type my credentials in right and all that stuff. Because sometimes I've got finger keys. Looks like this might be one of those times. And it's because I typed the password wrong. Probably did better that time. Okay, successful. There we go. Um, I'm not going to turn on any compression or anything because no point in having that extra processing power happening here. Um, we'll just go next and we'll say we'll do an advanced schedule and we'll run this um, and we'll say we'll run this um, I don't know let's just do it every day and we'll run it on I don't know at 1 a.m. perfect doesn't really matter because this particular directory never changes or very rarely ever changes. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a sync on this now and let this get going. And we'll go ahead and create our next one. This one will be for our documents. This, this is an important one here. So we'll choose the docs directory. I understand this next.
And I'll do the same thing here. I'll do this daily at 1 a.m. And we'll come back and we'll we'll kick these off here uh, probably manually in a few minutes anyway. I won't make you sit through all this. I'll bring you back as soon as I'm finished uh, creating all these things. All right, so here we are. We have our audiobooks uh, directory. It's finished syncing. It was successful. I've gone ahead and kicked off the documents so we can get going. Um, really, documents and pictures are two of my most important ones because there, I mean, there's just a ton of photos out there, and I, I do mean a ton of photos out there. Uh, also, the OneDrive Backup, it's a plugin or an application that you can get for your Synology NAS that will actually connect to OneDrive and pull all that data down. So all that data is backed up from OneDrive here to my Synology NAS. I'm also gonna push a backup of that out to our backup NAS as well. So at least I'll have you know a couple of backups. Redundancy's key, right? Also, while we're here, probably a good idea to jump in um, in the Unify and go ahead and adopt this PDU that we just put in place. We'll go ahead and um, let's rename that to um, Shop PDU. Apply that change. And as far as outlets go, um, these four uh, have nothing. Outlet number five, this is going to be our shop switch. Now when I want to power cycle something, I can do it. So that takes care of that. Well, now that the weather has cleared up just a little bit, I was able to take a little bit of time and do a little bit more work on the network. And one of the things that I wanted to take care of uh, during all this is the link down to my gate. That has been being fed by this, uh, this nano beam on the side of my house. That nano beam was originally shooting down to a pole on that garage, feeding the garage, and also, it was a point to multi-point, it was also catching the gate down there. Uh, so this was the station side of the multi-point and the garage and the gate were client sides. Well, Remember I said my, uh, my AP at the garage or my nano beam at the garage died, so there was only one link there. Um, the air fiber's way faster, like way faster. So, you know, I had a building, a building bridge laying around again. It was uh, used from another project or I think, no, it was a demo. I had it as part of a demo and it's been laying on my floor for well over a year now. So uh, I went ahead and deployed it. Now, the reason I didn't put it here is because I would prefer to have a camera in this location anyway. Um, you know, kind of looking out, I don't know, maybe this way, looking at my driveway or whatever. I already have cameras, you know, at the front porch, looking down the, the uh, walkway and such. So rather than waste that cable with a nano beam or with a nano beam or a building to building bridge, figured it best just to stick a camera up there. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. So the building to building bridge, I actually relocated it down to the same pole that our air fiber is mounted to and that is shooting down to the gate. At the gate, this is where I located the building to building bridge. There's also a couple of cameras down here and some wireless and some more things uh, for the gate automation. So far so good. You know, we've got a we've got a about a hundred percent link. Of course, it's a pretty short shot up there. Um, we, we got a hundred percent link, and um, we got about an 830 megabit or so uh, link potential. So that is a far cry from what I was getting with the uh, with the nano beams. So that's good. Also, I spent a little time trying to improve the link quality of the air fiber. And I never was able to get any better than negative 37 dB. So um, honestly, I think what's wrong is I think there is a, uh, a design flaw in my ability to um, spend enough time to get them any better than that. But link potential is like 3.8 gigabit. And 
each one of them is plugged into a one gigabit uh, port on a switch so I've got more capacity in the air than I've got on the wire so that's great um, as far as our NAS and our backups go I was able to get within the first day spend a little bit of time I was able to get my entire house replicated uh, down to this NAS everything's clean it's been working for several days now uh, the speed down here is dramatically better I mean way better and I was able to go in and start turning down some of the APs in my house and get uh, get the beacon set right on these so we can actually roam and handoff works uh, a little bit better so overall big improvement in quality big improvement all across the board really happy with the project wish I'd done it a lot sooner but life gets in the way right uh, anyway thank you so much for watching this video I uh, really appreciate it. If you have anything to say, please do so down in the comment section. Uh, please, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching.